Balance. It shapes our entire world. Nothing can be or not be without balance. This idea goes back to before the 3rd century BCE in China. It is represented in the yin and yang. A symbol that demonstrates balance between two things, like male and female, light and dark, young and old. Now, think about the middle or the border between the yin and the yang. This could be seen as a wall or barrier that prevents collaboration and compromise. However, that is not necessarily true. It could also be a gateway that allows collaboration and compromise to occur. Instead of a barrier, it can be a meeting place where people and ideas flow freely through it. When people think about balance, they think about the two sides that need to be balanced, not that small space between the two sides that makes the balance possible. Think of the fulcrum in the middle of a seesaw. The middle is the structure that supports our entire society. An example of this is in our artists. Our sculptures, paintings, poems, and ballads represent the fulcrum between who we are and who we aspire to be. Artists bring life and symbolism to our dark and boring world. Artists, broadly defined, can include historians, teachers, or even scribes. Anybody who weaves together our history and creates a future for the children in our society. The ancient Greeks had a word for this. Sophrosne, which means the ultimate and spiritual balance. Sophia means wisdom, and sin means to come together. So Sophrosne was achieved, achieved by human beings who brought together the sum of the wisdom of the world. Nature has its own balance as well, in the way that an animal lives and then dies, decomposes and then creates soil where a plant grows and lives. In essence, the animal died so that the plant could live. Individuals who reside in the middle are the, are the fulcrum that bring us together as a society. Have you ever read The Outsiders about the turf wars between the two gangs, the Socias and the Greasers? In this book, Ponyboy, the main character, breaks up the endless fight between the two groups. He is the fulcrum that stabilizes society. Also included in the middle are our unloved and forgotten, our un underprivileged and underappreciated, the people making the world a better place and the ones that have the potential to do so. The importance of the middle here in middle school is shown in a recent TED Talk by Danielle R. Moss, a New York City teacher. Mrs. Moss talks about the kids in, a more, in the middle of our school system who don't excel or fail. These kids who are practically forgotten, even if they have as much potential as the kids who do excel, will go about their lives thinking that they will not do anything extraordinary. This idea, which is totally wrong, is sadly commonplace in our society. Balance live in all, lives in all of us. When I say this, I mean it literally. In the way that oxygen, en oxygen enters the body and the way that carbon dioxide leaves it operate to sustain our lives. The way we stand on two legs is balance as well. On a personal note, I struggle as an 8th grader to find balance. I have to find time to do all my homework, play some video games, work on science bowl, read hang out with my family, read literature, and still get some sleep. This idea of maintaining a balanced life is hard to handle and even harder to achieve. However, it is, our, is the effort towards that balance that is the most important, as nothing can be achieved without effort. All this talk about middles gets, gets me thinking about my role as a middle schooler. Middle schoolers get a bad rap. We are always represent, represented in movies as geeky and awkward, like in Diary of a Wimpy Kid. However, we are actually in the perfect place to affect change and speak out freely all around the world. We are just old enough to speak in a mature fashion, but still young enough to believe in things that most adults give up on. Being in the middle is that pinnacle point in life, and I hope what I've said so far is proof of that. Thank you.